Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack one, pick one, opened Sinian Blood as one of the mystical archives. Playable card, although nothing too exciting. We've got an accomplished alchemist. It's gonna probably be at its best in a Witherbloom deck with some life gain synergy. But still, you know, okay by itself as a 2-5 that makes one mana. Anything else that jumps out? There's Mentor's Guidance as a decent card draw spell, good Magecraft enabler. And then a card like Environmental Sciences has also gone up in value recently. Just nice to have access to at least one of these in the sideboard to fix your mana, especially in three-color decks. I think I'm just going to take the Alchemist here. And then we might end up with some sort of uh, three-color deck where Alchemist can also help us splash. Seems like a fine card. Ooh. Well, there's a few options here. Mostly looking at Quandrix Cultivator and Ingenious Mastery as two cards that synergize nicely with Alchemists. Uh, if we can make a bunch of mana, then Mastery turns into a powerful card draw spell. I think I still prefer Cultivator early on, since the ramp is so valuable. Also, kind of fixes our mana, since it can get either a forest or an island. But yeah, Mastery would be quite nice too. And then we can hope to wheel like a Mathematician or a Quandrix Campus, even a Pop Quiz. Sure. Third pick, looking at Mage Duel. Best card overall is probably Closing Statement, but we're pretty far removed from Black-White. Pass Summoning would also be a fine pickup. But uh, Mage Duel seems totally fine here. All right, pick number four. Wow, this pack has all the Quandrix goodies. Divide by zero is excellent. There's Zimona as a nice card draw engine, plays well with her two ramp cards. Eureka Moment's fine too. And the Quandrix Pledge Mage can also quickly get out of hand. And then some more playables here with Guidance, Snakeskin Veil, Serpentine Curve. I think it's probably between Zimon and Divide by zero. I think I'm gonna take Zimon. Since we have the two ramp cards already to help us sink a bunch of mana into the ability. And then Cultivator also puts an extra land in play to get to eights a little bit faster. And then now I can take my Divide by Zero. Also a big fan of Overgrown Arch. Especially if we pick up some life gain synergy, so it's gonna be at its best in Witherbloom, but still going to be quite good in any green deck. There's also Heated Debates. I could take the Heated Debates and then try and splash it in my blue-green deck, which is also fine, although Divide by Zero is at least comparable to Heated Debate and keeps us in blue, so probably no reason to deviate for now. If it was like Heated Debate versus a slightly weaker blue card, I might have taken the heated debates. Pick number six. It's a pretty late Frost Trickster. Now, one thing I will say about Frost Trickster is it might not be as good as it would have been in a different set, since most of the blue decks are slightly more controlling decks trying to get to the late game, and they're not necessarily tempo decks trying to close out the game quickly, which is where the Frost Trickster would be at its best. While it may not be at its best in this set, it's still a powerful card, and I think probably better than Drake or Campus here. Ooh, wow. Seventh pick, that's a very late Rutha. This card can be amazing, and there's also Elemental Summoning, Pledge Mage, so Prismari seems wide open. Containment Breach would also be a fine pickup. I think I just have to take Rutha here as a clear signal that blue-red is open. And Rutha can do some very powerful things in the late game and perfect alongside our ramp cards. 
But again, Containment Breach, Summoning would all be excellent additions for this deck as well. And then a Field Trip seems great, a nice ramp card that lets us learn. Apprentice on the Splash is a little bit less exciting than Arutha. And a Pop Quiz versus Field Trip, I think I prefer Field Trip for now. Alright, so now I have to decide between probably the 2-drop and a Campus. I could use some good 2-drops. And I guess we are pretty likely to get another campus in one of the next few packs. So maybe I take the colony here. It does play well with cards like Field Trip and Cultivator that put extra lands in play. Ooh, wow. We wield Ingenious Mastery. I think I have to take it over campus now. And then I'll take a Letter of Acceptance, gives us a bit of ramp and mana fixing. Didn't think I'm playing Reject. And Prismari Campus, probably slightly better than the alternatives. Serpentine Curve, you know, can be okay. It's probably at its best in a Prismari deck, where you have a lot of cheap cantrips like Curate early on. And we're a bit short on Wizards for Mentor's Guidance. Take Archway Commons. Alrighty, and wow, a last big Containment Breach. Pretty happy with that. Second pack. Probably Fractal Summoning. Let me double check. Yeah, we've got a Silver Quill Rare. Maelstrom Use can have its moments, but it would be on the Splash in this case. So maybe not uh, where I want to be for this deck in particular. Would be nice with Ingenious Mastery. But I think uh, summoning overall is going to be better for us. And then we can hope to wheel another Prismari Campus. Maybe Golden Ratio or Professor. Alright, second pick. Ooh, there's some good cards here. Silver Quill Command and Professor of Symbology, two amazing white cards. In blue green, splash red. I guess there's another Fractal Summoning as my pick. And then Hope to Wheel Drake or Eureka Moment with would both be fine additions. The Vortex Runner to a lesser extent. But uh, pretty happy with this second Fractal Summoning. Inkling Summoning, probably the best card in the pack. We're looking at... Snarl, which might be worse than Prismari Campus. But... At the very least, it's 20 gems. A Vortex Runner, and a Professor. Maybe we want a Professor here, and then we're probably going to wheel one of the blue-red dual lines anyway. Just looking at my curve... This is more of a late game card. Yeah, I guess we could use an extra 4 drop. Ooh, it's a powerful Blade Historian passing us by. Can't really play that one, sadly. So we're looking at the Amplimancer, which is, you know, just okay, versus another campus. But we're probably going to wheel another campus later. Expanded Anatomy, not the most impressive lesson for this deck. Guess we'll take the 2-drop. Oh man, Silver Quill just wide open in this direction. Yeah, I mean, we don't really want a Prismari Apprentice. So this is a bit of a disappointing pack. Can take an introduction to prophecy versus a letter of acceptance. Don't think I want the assistant. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we did pass a few good blue and green cards in pack one just because some packs had three or four good blue and green cards. So we might be getting cut off in this direction, unfortunately. But I'll take an Amplomancer over Guidance. Our Wizard count isn't incredibly high right now. So there's Exponential Growth, which is only really good if we have some evasive creatures, which we only have a Trickster at the moment. So probably go for either a Colony or Curate. And between the two, I guess I prefer another Colony, so we can maybe cut an Amplomancer. Not too excited about this, though. Yeah, Silver Quill would have been the place to be, at least in pack two. Alright, so now it's Cram Session versus Strategic Planning. Sadly, not really able to splash Rise of Extus. Yeah, I mean, Cram Session, I guess, could be nice with our uh, Alchemist as well. So we'll maybe try that one. Golden Ratio did wheel, so that seems fine. And Vortex Runner wield. I think I prefer it over the Aerialist. Don't know if I'll play Impulse. Alright, so second pack was a bit of a disaster. It wasn't very good, sadly. Hopefully pack three delivers. And kick things off with, I guess, a Torrent Sculpture. Shouldn't be too difficult to pick up a couple counters. Otherwise, we're looking at another Crime Session or Environmental Sciences. I'll take the rare. Get an elemental summoning now. Sure. At least our lessons are looking good. Would like another field trip. If we can, hopefully we don't have to play the archway commons because we do have a lot of two drops and whenever your deck has a lot of two drops, commons goes down in value. Alright, there we go. There's a payoff card. Dragon's Guard Elite is awesome. Uh, there's some other great cards. Devouring Tendrils, Pledge Mage. But gotta take the Elite. Another Exponential Growth. We'll just take a Kelpie here, I think. Helps us ramp. Gives us some removal late game. Otherwise, Opt would be nice, especially now that we picked up Elite. So, might not have to play a Letter of Acceptance. So, wouldn't mind a few more ways to enable the Elite now. Alright, this pack has some goodies. Snow Day, Apprentice, Mage Duel, and even the two Learn cards would be great. What do I take? This might be a deck where we want Snow Day. Can be pretty tempo oriented. Apprentice is great to hit our land drops, but we do have a lot of two drops already. So I feel like the value of Apprentice isn't as high as it would be otherwise. And then Eureka moment's fine. Uh, could splash Prismari command. It's definitely a good card, but it's not like a busted card compared to some of the other commands. So I think we just prefer the Eureka moments to help us ramp. This one's a bit of a letdown. Can take a Pledge Mage. Although I'm not sure if it's better than some of the other two drops we currently have. Don't really want to splash a Pillar Drop Warden. Although it could help against flying creatures, but we have double skirted colony already. 
can maybe splash a battle seer, although that seems unlikely. Honor Troll doesn't have a ton of synergy. This pick probably doesn't matter too much. All right, we wield both Cram Session and Pop Quiz. I don't actually hate Cram Session when we have Alchemist and a few powerful lessons to search up. I'll take a Curate over Teach by Example. Don't know if that's going to make the cuts. All right, wields Transformation as an extra lesson. And we wield Exponential Growth and Vortex Runner. Yeah, in terms of evasive creatures, we're still not doing great. But I probably don't need a second Vortex Runner. Alright, so overall not the most exciting deck. A little bit light on removal and not as much ramp as I would have liked. Yeah, we had a lot of Quandrix stuff in pack 1. Prismari also seemed wide open. Pack 2 we saw a bunch of Silver Quill. And then the last pack we got some nice green cards, but maybe not quite enough to tie the deck together. So these are all the lessons. So double fractal summoning, elemental summoning. Got a double transformation, containment breach, introduction to prophecy. And then cards that help us learn. Got double cram session, divide by zero, field trip. So those are all probably going to stay in the deck. And then Curate could be cuttable, an Amplomancer can probably go. Not sure about the Plunge Mage, not sure about Exponential Growth. Probably want a Golden Ratio, Mastery is a fine mana sink. So... Probably don't need a Battle Seer. So we're really just splashing for Rutha. How many instants and sorceries do we have? Yeah, we probably still have enough for Rutha to be worth it. So what's the mana situation if we want to splash Rutha? Double Archway Commons. I don't really want two Archway Commons in the deck though. Maybe it's not worth it to splash Rutha. Yeah, if we had, you know, double or triple campus instead of commons, it would be less of a concern. But commons is just so bad when we want to play a two drop on turn two. I did not pick up environmental sciences, unfortunately, which I'm definitely regretting now. Yeah, I guess we'll have to go without Rutha. Pledge Mage goes, Curate goes, Growth goes. So this is 38, so can still fit in two extra cards potentially. Could play the exponential growth anyway as kind of a random win condition sometimes. Although again, it's going to be at its best with creatures like Vortex Runner and Frost Trickster that are more likely to connect with the opponents. And then think Symmetry Sage is going to be all that amazing. It is like fine with the two cram sessions. So we can hit for 2 and turn 2, but it feels pretty underwhelming. Yeah, our top end is mostly going to be Fractal Summoning out of the sideboard. Could play another Amplomancer as a, a mana sink. Or a Curate just to have another way to trigger Dragon's Guard Elite. Could also play Adventurous Impulse as a cheap cantrip since we're not doing much on turn 1 anyways. And then... Maybe just a Curate. Don't have that many payoff cards for casting instants and sorceries, just the Elite. Yeah, maybe Exponential Growth anyway. Just to try and steal a win if the opponent doesn't expect it. Because our deck is going to try and race for the most part. We are pretty aggressive for a Quandrix deck. So if we get into a racing situation, I could see Exponential Growth. Surprising the opponents. I guess it's worth a shot 
at least we'll get to play with it a bit. And then the mana distribution favoring green. So 9, 8. Seems fine. The best case scenario for this deck is probably playing the Alchemist and then casting Cram Session to essentially generate four extra mana, which could be pretty sweet. I did forget about Alchemist for mana fixing, so that could technically also help us cast Rutha. So maybe it's still worth it to play Rutha here. It's a close call. Although I'm kind of liking the two-color version as well. All right, let's try the Experimental Exponential. A lot of lands, but we do have a Mana Sink, so I'll try it. And Zimon can also put lands in play, so turn three we can just activate Zimon. Well, we're gonna get to eight lands in play pretty quickly here at this rate. And we did draw Vortex Runner, so that could be our winning combo. So with eight mana, we get to triple its uh, power. So we go from three to six to 12 to 24. So we only need one attack. Potentially. Can still activate Zimun. So next turn we could, let's see, two. Yeah, next turn we could already kill them, right? And I'm guessing Zimon's a bigger target for removal right now. Ponon does have a bunch of mana up. Hmm, we even drew the cram session to go with Alchemist. So we could go for the kill here. Problem is, Ponon has six mana up, so if they have, let's say, an expel. Although I, I didn't notice a pause end of turn. So maybe they don't have Expel. What else could they have here? It's a speed. Maybe like a Flunk. Yeah, I mean, it would be pretty epic if we can just kill them here. I can start by casting Cram Sessions, see if there's a response. I didn't really notice a response. Could also just make a big fractal, but, you know, I'm no coward. So x equals, uh, let's see, 8, 4. Uh-oh. Well, that's just disappointing. So that's why there wasn't a real pause since we didn't have a target for it yet. Yeah, maybe baiting with summoning was a play there, but oh well.
divide by zero is not going to keep me alive. So this is where it's useful to look at our sideboard. Although it would be nice if the lessons were somewhere else. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that really saves me here. Can draw with Zimon. So looks like we're going to be able to pull off our combo again. So hit for two, play Alchemist, and then next turn we can set up a big turn, I think. Already have a three mana card, so a Sculptor could be a 4-4, four, four, but I think we'll wait. Can go Cram Session into Eureka Moments. And grab... Maybe a fractal summoning at this point. Not this many green. Uh, do we have any double green cards? This is probably fine. Another crime session for next turn. All right, I guess we'll play Torn Sculptor. get rid of a uh, Eureka moments. All right. And then we've got Snow Day to maybe start getting in some good attacks. So next turn go Cram Session Summoning, turn after Snow Day. Opponent's got a lot of wormholes. Ooh, is he moan too? So this is a 6-6. Six, six. Opponents with 7 lands in place, so still one short of Kelpie Guide. A little 1-1 one, one Serpent. That's cute. So let's see, I can play another 6-6 six, six summoning. Or I could go Simone and then Snow Day in the opponent's turn, tap down the two wormholes. Maybe going for another summoning first is the play to get in a bit more damage. Right. 
Right, the Kelpie guy, I guess, could also untap the Serpent, so... Might have to tap Serpent plus Guide. Divide by zero, that's a good one too. So I don't have the mana to divide plus Snow Day. So I'll probably go Zimone, Snow Day in the opponent's turn. And then divide in my turn. Opponent's cries. It's kind of interesting that they kind of want the eighth lands, but of course drawing a land at this stage is also not desirable. So that's maybe what they're deciding. Alright, they found land eight. So we'll let them attack if they want to. So I think we go Kelpie plus Serpents. Colony now also 4-4. Four, four. So if they try and double block, I can bounce Serpent, kill Colony. Untaps a runner. Alright, and then Land can go. All right, decisions, decisions. So this is land eight for my own colony. Could draw two with Zimone first. In case that changes my play, but I doubt it will. Field trip could get the transformation, which can also potentially finish off a creature. So I can play both of these plus transformation. So let's just smash. And then get Elemental Summoning, probably. Alright, sweet. Just gonna develop our mana. Next turn, alchemists. We're not actually close to getting eight lands in place since most of our ramp is permanent and non lands based. We've got another colony. So next turn we can go Kelpie Guide plus Colony if we don't draw land. If we do draw land, Guide plus Runner. Can wait on Trickster to maybe tap down something bigger. Well, that's pretty big. Another one. Alright. Well, at least my snow day is going to be good. Although I think we still want to develop some creatures first.
so much life gain. Theoretically, I could triple block, but I don't think I want to. I guess they can block with Colony, but maybe that's okay if they do. Hmm, I guess they could also double block Runner. So maybe I don't attack with anyone except Alchemists. Because I really need to hit my 8 lands with Eureka Moment next turn. Things are about to get cold. Discards Trickster Colony. Ouch. That's probably game over. So still one short of my eight lanes. Although I probably want to take out a colony right now. And then Kelpie Guide can cast my divide by zero. Which I should probably just do now, to be fair. and gets to dig pretty deep. Keeps one card on top. How big? 5-5. Five, five. Whereas Fractal Summoning... I can potentially play for 7... a 9 for 7. Maybe I'm better off playing the Turn Sculptor. That way if they do have interaction for my creature, at least I don't have to chump with my Vortex Runner. Alright, I mean, we managed to sort of survive the Snow Day blowout. Ooh. All right, opponent's got their own Vortex Runner now, so that's going to be a must tap down with Kelpie Guide. So X equals 7. They might have their own Fractal Summoning. So we're still getting hit by the Drake, potentially. I 
If Drake attacks, at least I can attack with my 7-7. Seven, seven. Ooh, never mind. Opponent with a 7-7 seven, seven curve. Simone might be a little late. I mean, technically, this board is somewhat stable. We're just, you know, taking one from the Drake, so we're bleeding a bit of damage. But other than that, we could trade off, and then we have Zimon to take over. Start by drawing two. Exponential growth. How much mana can I make? So three, four, I can double twice. Still a little bit short, but next turn we can definitely kill them. So I just have to survive one turn here. Everything but the runner could die. Yeah, I could have attacked with runner, maybe needed it as an extra blocker, you never know. Since next turn we're gonna have more than lethal anyway. Opponent's fully tapped out, and Chance gets to have its glorious moment here. So x equals 5. Oh yes. Sweet. This hand is not great, but if we draw forest, it's pretty decent. Still get to play Kelpie on three. We'd love to draw green mana for elite so we can get the benefit of some magecraft triggers. Oof, I really don't want to give my opponent two treasures this early in the game. I could mastery draw one card. That's just too depressing. I'll wait and next turn I can draw uh, three at least. At least her opponent's not doing too much. We'll have to discard to hand size, but that's fine. So we finally found green mana. I kind of like double colony field trip as a package. Divide by zero is our only interaction, so maybe it's the island here. Even though I want lands for my double colony. And then next turn we could go elite plus maybe divide. And a Kelpie, I guess, gives us access to double green. So I could go Elite, plus Field Trip, and then I have two mana left, which doesn't do much for me. 
or I could go elite, untap forests, play colony and still have divide by zero, that seems better. Yeah. So they've got something in hand. Yeah, I guess we could also divide plus mage duel. Although there's nothing I really need to mage duel and into two open mana. Seems a bit sketchy if they have the minus four minus so. Alright, opponent just makes a treasure. If we can counter something that they cast using the treasure, that would be nice. Yeah, we'll set that back a turn. I could also wait, let it resolve, exile the masterpiece and then bounce it. Although, how big is it going to be? Picks up four counters, so it's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. I might be able to honestly just mage duel it with my elite. Oh, they did actually have counterspell. Alright. Fair enough. Still got the counter at least. I could field trip. There's all the cool things we can do here potentially. Seven, eight mana if we count Kelpie Guide. So I could Field trip, leaves five, mage duel for one, leaves four, pay two for wards, so I have two mana left. So I could get the, uh, what's the name again? The transformation to grow my own creature before we fight. Although if we go field trip, mage duel, this will pick up two counters already. So it's going to be a five, five, and then it gets the bonus from mage duel, so... We should be fine just getting a Fractal Summoning then. Five, five, and then plus one, plus two. good. And then if Elite survives we can start doubling its counters. We've got Fractal Summoning as another nice threat. Ooh, Snow Day. That's gotta be pretty huge here. I use Kelpie Guy to tap down Pledge Mage, attack with everyone. Best they can do is double block Colony. If they triple block elite, I could just pump it, so they would have to have a trick. And then attack with everyone but Kelpie Guide. And then Snow Day in the opponent's turn. If they counter my Snow Day, I could be in trouble. Five, six, seven, eight. I wouldn't be dead on the way back, necessarily. So this might be a little bit too aggressive. But I'm gonna go for it anyway. Maybe it should leave one colony back. And that's maybe still good enough. I guess that's fair. And then just take nine. And then I can't play my runner. So I'll just pass. Could also take a turn off to play some more creatures before casting Snow Day. All right, let's see what they've got. Uh, the double serpentine curve, bombo combo. So glad I left my colony back.
Is this a case of fractal summoning not being good enough? Since a life gain on cramp session is kind of useful, and I can just grab another fractal summoning with it. Golden ratio seems pretty good. So I could go Vortex Runner and then Golden Ratio. Alright, and then probably Cram Session. Could tap down a Pledge Mage attack. So this is Must Chump. And then they can take 8, so they have to chump another colony. I could also just play Amplomancer here. And then the question is whether we send in colony after tapping, or if we just attack and let them double block. I think I do tap. And then probably just a Pledge Mage. So they have to double chump, take four. The safest play might be to just gain four life, to be honest. I did not think this deck was going to get 7 wins, but here we go. Let's crack some packs. Ooh, nice card for Historic. Pack one, pick one. Honestly, might just be Fractal Summoning. Command does have its moments. So that's also a consideration here. I think it's Command over Dina. Rushed Rebirth, not a great rare. This is a pretty weak pack overall. Humiliate might be the best card. And Dream Tricks, that card is quite good. <laughs> Fervent Mastery. Yeah, that's probably candidate for worst rare in the set. What are we taking? Could take Iteration as a fine cantrip. Or Apprentice. Oh yes. Professor Onyx, haven't had the pleasure to play this in Limited yet, but seems like a great card. And Snow Day definitely won us a few games today. Stone Rain. We'll have to make a historic Stone Rain deck. But uh, pack one, pick one. Probably go for Retriever Phoenix. So that's going to do, do it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.